guys we're here doing our very first podcast and this is something we've been talking about doing for a while but because of time and really because that's really the main issue we just Just haven't really done it um super busy hopefully this will be the first of many but at this point we're just trusting it out see if it, this is even something that somebody out there would want to listen to or right. watch or whatever. Um, but um, we got big plans for these and hopefully um, many more to come. Oh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> and I hope they work out good. Um, and also drop comments on what you'd like to hear us talk about in a hard podcast. Primarily, I believe the channel will be based on car and the automotive world however um since we deal with so much gear from you know where the cameras and microphones lights and everything in between we also want to give people a little bit of uh basically the knowledge that we have that we gather in the years that we've been doing this um and you know uh with so much gear coming out day in day out you know not necessarily the most expensive camera yeah. most expensive microphone or the things that you need. Sometimes there's really good alternatives out there that are, you know, a fraction of the price that are probably more than enough for most people. You know, um, I think a lot of people see, um, you know, big YouTubers and things like that with uh, with like red cameras and yeah. and these crazy setups. And quite honestly, like unless you're really shooting something that is borderline like a movie, I just don't think anything like that is yeah. necessary. Yeah, and then also, we're gonna like all the new car stuff coming out, just try to touch on that, and then the same thing, if you don't have to spend, if you can get the same quality part for a fraction of the cost, we're gonna try to you know, give you the heads up on that stuff too, just to save you money and still get the same performance, whether it be camera gear or cars. So. Yes, I, I'm a huge believer if that a part is worth the price, definitely get it. But for something that is literally just a piece of metal that there's no technology, no nothing to that. I'm, I'm all about like if there is something that is actually better, that is cheaper, go for that. And also like in the used market, like a lot of people act like that's not a thing that is available. But yeah, there's a if, big used market. If you can... If your chassis or, or your platform has been around for a while, more than likely somebody else has done what you've done and want to upgrade. So somebody else's downgrade is could very well be your upgrade yeah. uh, for half the price, yeah. sometimes and even people, less. People change their setups all the time, mm-hmm. you know. Uh, so it's the used market is really, really good. And I think, you know, it's easy to find now on Facebook, you know, we have web groups for Subarus, GTRs, um, you know, every little market that you're looking for, you can always find good quality used parts. So it shouldn't really be a problem. And, you know, we're going to help you like, might even do like, um, you know, look at something we're looking for, for our personal vehicles, and then show you how we found it. and and used and just make sure you don't get ripped off with you know be aware of buying stuff through through facebook and all that so yes <laughs> it, it, i mean if you can buy it local and meet the person i recommend that over just you know shooting them the money and you don't get nothing in the mail <laughs> two or three weeks later that or you know something that even very recently happened to me there was something that i bought that i mean even with it not being complete, it was still about half as much as what it would have cost for me to buy it new. So in the end, it still worked out. But they sent me everything except for one piece. And when when I called the um, 
the company that makes it, like it was a few hundred dollars. So, you know, things like that are probably more common than people just straight up not sending you stuff. But still, it's just something to kind of be wary. Like like yeah. Tommy said, if if you can like go grab it and touch it and feel yeah, it and, right. and make sure everything's there, I you know we would definitely advise you to go that route for sure. Um, is there any platforms or anything that you want to talk about? Oh, uh, let's talk about the new Toyota eighty six. I think the new eighty six. I seen uh, Rob Dom's video on it the other day, and he he seemed to really enjoy it. And they also broke down uh, some interesting stuff. I thought for mm -hmm. the aftermarket, they're actually said that they actually built the car like it's really dumbed down performance wise. Are you talking about the Super? Yeah. Oh, okay. I thought you said eighty six. I was like, what are well, you they, talking about? Well, they call about? it like it's the the new eighty six. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah that that is but, one thing that I definitely feel. I mean, it didn't leave live to the the super name. No. But then again, I don't feel like nothing would have lived up yeah, to the super and, name. I mean, like they had such a good project. The way as I feel about it, because the super back in the day, I mean. It's still relative to today. Like, it's a timeless design, I think. And then the new one just, uh, I don't know, it really didn't really do much for me because, you know, it's like, I feel like it's that video when you see a Supra is like, ah, yo, is that a Supra? And uh, <laughs> yeah, it's spraying Windex in his eyeglasses. <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah. that's like, I it's, seriously watched that meme hundreds um, of times. Yeah, so, and I don't feel like the new one does that, but. I haven't seen it in person yet, so I'm going to try to wait to see it. I mean, it does look cool in the pictures, but I feel like it doesn't really resemble what it is. I feel like it's just a Z4 with the, the front and the back cut off and changed and redesigned. But like I said, in that video, they was telling Rob Dom, um, you know, they've Bit like it's they put the biggest inner coolers and stuff like that to make it where it's real easy. Well, it's real mod friendly, so I think that's kind of cool. That and they built the motor to handle a little bit more power than what it comes out with, so it's going to be really mod friendly. And and I thought that was neat that the manufacturers, you know, they're not planning for it just to have the 330 horsepower all its life. Something that you know. Regardless of whether we agree with the choice of what the Supra is, or you agree with the so choice that Toyota made and BMW made to join together, uh, there's something that has been thrown out in the automotive world that I think it's very legit. I mean, like people act like money is just not an issue. Oh yeah. But um, in the world that we are today, with as as little as car enthusiasts as they are. Most car manufacturers cannot afford to build a sports car all on their own. That's why right. you've had Toyota do the 86 with Subaru, right. and now they're doing a Super with BMW. Yeah. Um, is that a cop out for them not to make their own? Who knows? But at the end of the day, most people are literally just not worry about how fast their car is they're just literally trying to get from a to b oh yeah and they're trying to see how they get there for the least amount of money whether is that is how much the actual car was or how much gasoline to take you there you know like efficiency and stuff like that so right. um i just think we're, we're at this weird place and in many ways it's kind of like the 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 golden era of performance uh i would definitely say oh, yeah. especially like on the really on the on the American team. car world like there's yeah. a big boost but there's these new platforms that are coming out um, like the new FA20 right. I mean it's the, well, the FA24 yes those so, are coming out really strong I, I in my eyes the GTI it has a really good powerful engine that can yeah. make a lot of power yeah and I drove one of those in Germany so they're mm -hmm. actually really good cars I just think this whole idea that you have to have big displacement in order to make power um, that's that's yeah, just not a it's a thing of the past yes really. um, I mean everything's turbo now even economic economic right. turbos now which 
kind of make it cool because everybody gets one and then yeah. it kind of makes it not as unique as you know we, 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 you go back like whenever Subaru put turbos on a four right. cylinder and like, it was people really were losing their minds it was know? next level yeah um, I mean back in 05, 04 like STIs were, were like just so far ahead of the game and then I feel like to the, up today's STI, it doesn't really compete with what's out there. Mm -mm. Like, don't get me wrong, it's still a great car, and I think they're just, I mean, they're really good cars to get into and mod and make it your own, but at the same time, like, everything's coming out with 400 horsepower now, so it's really hard to keep up with, and, you know, for, I think now, like, a decked out STI is around 43, 45, and it's just too much money for yeah, what it is. I mean, it really is, especially when mm -hmm. in 05 I bought my first STI for like 32, and that was like decked out. When the V6 Toyota Camry has five less horsepower <laughs> than the brand new STI that you can get for, I yeah. mean, if you were to start adding up options, you could get it to 50. Right. Oh, yeah. I mean, that is a very hard recommendation recommendation yes, uh, yes for 50 grand you can get a lot of cars right you know well, i mean at 50 looking, grand now you get that you, you can get an GTR. In, in used utr you can get something american you can get a nice yeah. vet like oh, yeah. so much more car yeah than i mean what that is yeah because the, the only edge the the super has got over those cars is it's more practical like it's got four doors uh more space and it's easy to get out in and out of Visibility is great. Which, quite honestly, I think it's it's a huge plus that, you know, like the money situation. Yeah. People are not talking about that. Like, right. yeah, that is the race car that you go race. But then, like, what about the race car that you literally have fun going from, from one life yeah. to the other? And then, you know, I just picked up the kids. They're with the nanny. Right. I'm going to go hit up a, a, a couple fun roads. You know, there's something to be said about that, yeah. too. And, and that... Yeah, that's how you get the kids into and, it too. And so. so, also something to be said about how much power do you actually need? Oh, because okay. uh, you know, when you when you go down to it, shoot, man, like on the right on the right car, a hundred horsepower is enough. Like you get on on a little Miata that is decked oh, out yeah. right, you go on the right back road. Yeah, man, you're gonna have fun. Oh yeah, that's like uh, those uh, Fiat uh, spotters. Yeah. Right? That's a good uh, one. Of my buddies has one of those that's uh, upgraded with the turbo and stuff like wow. that. Wow. Okay. And I drove it, and it don't feel like you're going fast. But they was actually behind me in the STI, and he said he was trying everything he could to keep up, but I didn't feel like I was going fast at all. And, you know, we, we've talked about this a couple times, but that is one of the main reasons that kind of like me as good as a a Subaru is for handling, especially the newer ones with the yeah. vectoring and. And all that stuff they got going on after, you know, all the years of them figuring out how to do with the old drive. Yeah. Um, I went to a back road with some nice KW coilovers. You know, it, was, it wasn't it was crazy set up, but it was like what most people would do. Right. And I went with an NA Miata. And he had pretty much done everything he could as far as suspension. But, you know, at the point, at that point, all he had was like an exhaust. Yeah. And I had the most difficult time trying to keep up with him. <laughs> and I mean, I don't consider myself to be like a horrible driver. I'm not right. like the greatest out there or anything, but I was, I was at that point where I was like, wow, I finally get Miatas. Or I finally yeah. get cars that are, that are that light, right. that are well, cu curvy road cars, not necessarily yeah. straight road cars. And so that's why everybody loves the, the BRZ or the FRS. Because I drove those too, and they don't have any power straight line, but they do have good cornering and stuff like that. And they they they're good road canyon carvers, or you know, just a you need a real good curvy back road to have fun with those. So yeah, I think every car has their purpose, and you know, like like I said, I think the eighty six or the BRZ or whatever, if it has. If it came with a turbo from factory. If it just had S2000 like, power, yes. it, 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 to this point, most people would not be getting the, the SDI. They would be getting the BRC. Yes. And I, I, think I, I guarantee that, you know. I think that's why they keep it like that. Because mm -hmm. they, they, they don't want to hurt themselves yeah. by not selling that one. 
Because at the end of the day, once again, we're, we're going back to that money. Right. That is somehow, I mean, who knows how Toyota did it, but somehow right. Subaru gets some money out of that. Yeah. You know what I mean? So oh, yeah. it's not a sell that they get 100% of that versus if they sell a WRX or if they sell an STI. Right. That is 100% of the money that they're making. Yeah. Um, but, you know, going back to this whole thing of you have your cars that can go one thing or cars that can do other the reason of why I feel most people are so passionate about Subarus is because they're so good to get you to that, like, almost, <laughs> they can, you know, like, if a Miata is a 1 out of 10, and right. it's a 10, a, a rightly set up Subaru can be, like, a 7 or an 8. Like, that's just how it is. Yeah. If, let's say, a fast muscle car on a straight line is... A 10, a Subaru can get you like a 7 or 8. Like once again, you know what I mean? Like, And it's all about how you want to set it up. Where you right. want your money to go. Where you want your money to, your mods to go. Yeah. And that's why, in my eyes, what makes it so special. Because you, you got guys in the Subaru world who are like into camping, who into right. uh, rallying, into... I mean, now even like drifting, which I mean, I don't I don't really understand no. like, you know, why you would get an all-wheel drive and car and uh, make like, a real-wheel drive, yeah. but still... Um, every every kind of out of mode, out of sport, war, uh, performance activity there there is. Right. Subarus are doing a little bit of that, which in my eyes are what makes it the the best. Even though we're so critical about it, and oh, I think yeah. we're so critical about it because we love them so much. Yeah. Um, and that's just kind of how it is, you know. And in the end of the day. All right. Like that is my dream car. Like one day, yeah. like you said, you will always have a, a a SDI. Oh yeah. And I mean, I plan on getting other cars, but right. that that's it. Like I'll once I die, that that <laughs> passes to my children. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like I, unless something really bad happened, which I hope not. Right. But um, but yeah. Yeah. No. And I and I think you're right about that. Like why we are so critical on. Um, is just because we do love them so much and and I, we want them to advance but it's just like when they're falling behind you know it's kind of scary because yeah um you we know. we know the potential that they can have and you right. know um i don't know exactly where we're at 17 minutes that's not bad uh, i don't know where we'll take this video to and what all we'll talk about but one of the things that we've talked about is if Subaru from the factory were to sell this like a ten thousand dollar option, I mean I personally think they could do it for way less. But like yeah. even if that was an option that you could get it for ten grand from the factory and it's a built motor, um, I don't understand why they don't have that option out there. I, I yeah. know most people would take it. Oh, and yeah, because then you wouldn't have to do anything but bolt your stuff to it. We've he's even talked about some other crazy stuff. Oh, we're gonna talk about your idea. Yeah, <laughs> well, my idea is Subaru should just sell you the car and then no engine in it, and then you could just put your engine in it <laughs> and then roll on from there. Because I mean, it's just a matter of time when you're gonna put a built motor in it. So if you could just cut out that and then just you know go ahead and spec your motor to what you think you're going to make or something like that or you know go ahead and <laughs> put in the rotating kit and turn it up have fun and not have to worry about it <laughs> but i'm sure you know you heard that first part the car without a without an engine right. because everything else is actually really good the the, the tri train is really good oh, axles yeah. and all yeah. that stuff it's just the engine not not to say they can't be upgraded oh, yeah. obviously they can you know but um, it is just such a shame. I feel like at this point, but we're we're I I'm very very close to. I think we're very close to um, seeing the new FA STI yeah. and whether they go FA twenty four or F twenty five. I think yeah. it's gonna be an upgrade over the WRX that is out right now, and seeing what they're doing with the new platform, oh, yeah. having that extra I mean, displacement. I think is. It's just gonna be unreal. Yeah, because like you said, you sent me that car the mm -hmm. other day that Junior did at fifty pounds, and would it make nine something? Yes, uh, that's so, that's that seems I mean, like. I mean, I just don't think I could be wrong. I just don't think 
to EJ four or five years into its when it was made, it was making that kind of power. Well, um, the technology wasn't there. Like yes, and then there's also the whole thing in which people don't like to talk about. But let's be real, like the reason of why they're able to extract all the power out of the FA is because the, the right. tuners have had all these experiences yes. with Subaru in the past and yeah. they, they're finding different ways, but it's all very much the same right. thing that they've been doing. Yeah, and the new motor's direct injected mm -hmm. too, so that makes a big difference, which I'm pretty sure they're using port injection and direct injection. For the that. for the big power, yes. yeah, for sure. Yeah. Which, uh, if Subaru did that from, from the get-go on oh, the new SDI, yeah. ooh. Yeah, they, they they would have something special in their hands for it, sure. Exactly, because I mean, like I said, I, I do like the new FA motors. Uh, the gas mileage is a lot better, mm -hmm. and I mean, it just makes them more you know drivable and stuff like that. Because the EJs they don't really get the greatest. And I had, a while back I drove a twenty eighteen. Uh, I was doing something for the dealership for about a week, and driving that compared to an STI as far as like. The gas mileage is tops. Like, I mean, it's yeah, actually, it is. It's, it's literally a generation ahead. It, you know it surprises me because, like I said, if they can get that into an STI and then you can still have your performance mm -hmm. plus the gas mileage, like that's just awesome. Because you know, more money you save on gas, you get more money you got for parts. For sure. <laughs> and uh, I mean, there, there's there's many reasons of why I think Subaru will have to do that. I don't think they oh, have a choice. No, they don't have a choice because uh, they already point. lost the sales in the UK yes. uh, yeah. because of the gas mileage. Mm -hmm. um, and other, there are plenty of other countries who will, will after I think 2025, will literally not allow you to have a sedan that gets under 25 miles per gallon. And um, SUVs will still be around 20, which I mean, that's still not bad, but right. um, when, when you think about it, like a modded EJ STI or WRX gets borderline the mile gas mileage of like a big 1500 truck. Oh, yeah. Probably, that's just probably not, works. That's just not acceptable on a four cylinder. <laughs> it's just not, yeah. you know? Um, yeah, because especially when they're only 85 and stuff and big injectors and big power. Yeah. Like, I mean, I mean, I've seen some dudes with 10 miles per gallon on the yeah. four-cylinder. And, you know, if you were telling me that a V12 or V10 made that, I'd be like, okay. Right. But a four-cylinder. Yeah. You know. They and the same fuel. It, and, it's, and it's literally what they're made for. They're made for the more air, the more fuel you right. draw, the more power it'll make. I understand that. But still, like, I feel like from the get-go, like, from the factory, it should be somewhat better at being more efficient. Right. Um, which I mean, the new ones are. Um, they're getting there. But um, oh yeah, we got about twenty-two minutes. Is there anything else you want to talk about to wrap uh, this up, or no, you want to keep talking? We'll just wrap it up here. Uh, that way, we'll just, but guys, this is just going to be the first of many. And uh, if you like this, please give us a like and subscribe, and then also drop a comment below of a topic you would like us to talk about or you know Definitely. we can even discuss with you in the comments mm -hmm. um, and go from there but uh as always we appreciate y'all viewing and uh we'll see you in the next episode uh and stay tuned also for a lot of content that is going to be happening today right. lots of <laughs> cool shots with uh graffiti and just city, city scenes also some cool burnouts later uh, it's gonna be cool. Just uh, you know, stay. Look at our stories and everything else. Oh yeah, it should be should be follow fun. us on Instagram, YouTube, all that stuff. Yep, YouTube, and uh, I'll dr drop a link to his channel too because he does really good cinematic stuff and just well. And he's gonna have tutorials soon for you guys to to show you how to do the tutorials and stuff. That's right. So if you like camera gear and cars, check us out. Peace, guys. Thank you. Later. Feel pretty good about that.